everybody's good now. Like everybody's right. good. There's not what what Coach V or defensive coordinator says. There's not one bad player you're gonna play against. If you start in this league, it doesn't mean like you can't play. Like he's there for a reason. Like everybody's good. You saw playing time last year. What did it mean to you to get out on the field? Yeah, it was. It felt pretty. It good. was cool. It was good to yeah. see you out there. Yeah, I started at Mike. I got, I got to start at the middle linebacker position this uh, last year for all eight games. Uh, no, seven out of eight games. Mm -hmm. I got rotated a lot in the last game against Western. But yeah, it was pretty good. A lot of hard work went in the off season. Always working hard in the off season, including right now as well. It's, just, uh, it's a competition each week to be in that spot, and it's uh, obviously fun to be chosen to be in that spot. How excited are you, Xavier, to play university football? I'm stoked, man. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great opportunity, and and I see nothing but 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 the future that you know, holds in football. So yeah, I'm excited. How much can you learn from your brother? And I think that's something that's really neat for you as the younger Pineda brother that you've got an older brother in Mario who's gone through the system, he knows the training regimen, he knows what it takes to play at the next level. How much do you guys just converse? Obviously you converse about football because you're a football family, but what can you learn from him just in terms of preparing yourself for the next level? Because like you just said, it's a huge adjustment. Yeah, I think the, the number one thing he instilled is that to, to succeed at the next level, you need a lot of work ethic um, and, just, and just to have drive constantly. Cause like he's always constantly telling me, um, your spot's never going to be there if you're not working hard enough, right? There, there's mm -hmm. always going to be a guy who's coming for you, and there's always going to be a guy next in line if you're not if you're not making the cut. So it's always to stay on top of your game and, and keep your work ethic there. And yeah, that's what that's what coaches are looking for, for sure. What makes you as talented as you are? I've watched you for a lot of years. You can make cuts. You've got speed. I think you'll be successful at the next level. I think you can make guys miss. I think it's that simple. And it's been fun to watch you with Jacob Hessler do your thing for the last five years. But, you know, when you look at the next level, what do you think is going to allow you to be successful? What are the best skills that you've got that translate from Jacob Hessler football to OUA football? Um, I think just just the coaching and, and, we're, and the culture that we come from. Um, just Whitey instilling in us that, that we are there at that school to, to go to the next level. And um, yeah, he, he shows us from from early, right? Even in grade nine, you gotta learn, you gotta learn the way of practice. You, you gotta practice the way you play, and, mm -hmm. and yeah. So I think that's that's a huge uh, advantage that I have, um, just coming from a winning program and a, and a program that sees football as a priority and, and and really really shows their their players to to really grind at it. It's a factory. Yeah. At Jacob Hesler. Yeah. It is a factory. You mentioned James Roberts' name, yeah. right? There's a kid who won the Wix a championship for Jacob Hesler for the first time yeah. at University Stadium. That was an amazing, amazing moment. They got there for the third time and finally got it done. But, you know, we can list off names of kids. You know, Jackson White has obviously gone off to McMaster. Uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of guys that have been successful. And you're right, I think that has to do with coaching. Sure. It's that simple. They know how to prepare you. And Greg White, Whitey, as you called him a minute ago, is obviously a, a huge, huge influence on, on all the students, not only for their studies, but for football as well. He recently won an award, a coach's award for his outstanding season, leading your group, Xavier, to the offset title. Mario, just speak to White and, and the impact he's had. Yeah, he's definitely a legend, yeah. Uh, uh, just like the system that we have at Jacob is just like a system. Like it's a, it's a, how would you like say? It? Like it's a program. So one thing is like it's like an OUA program. Yeah, it's like an OUA program. Right. So, it's not a high school program. So that's one thing that we no I noticed. Obviously, was that there's kids coming from all over the place when you get to university, that they're not used to like being in a program. And like for us, it's like just like another day. Like, right. It's like we did high school. The transition was really really easy for yeah. you because of Greg White, then, because of Anthony Maggio Como. Yeah. And then there's kids that get there and just their minds blown because like in you know, in high school they just got told to go out there and do whatever they wanted. Right. But yeah. But then other than that, uh, Whitey obviously playing at the next level and Magic playing at the next level and uh, most of the other coaches playing at the next mm -hmm. level really helps a lot. And just the way that they expect things of you, they have high expectations of of um, what you're supposed to do on the field mm -hmm. is like doing your job. It's just. That's really what makes it special. And it's not like any secret recipe or like anything. They don't have like a special thing. It's just like that they are just so consistent of what they preach and like they have like uh, like regiments. Like just yeah, and, and you want to win for them too. Yeah. You go out in the field and you're motivated because they know the hours and the time that is going into making you guys successful people. You know, let me throw Mark Paddock's name out, Xavier. 
junior football coach, right? Yeah, and that right. team, again, unbelievable. They've won back to back to back to back to back to back, or I lost count there, but they've won a lot of Wix at Junior Championships. Yeah. And it all starts with the junior program, and it all starts with Paddock, and he gets those boys ready so that you talk about the transition, Mario, but when you go from grade 10 junior football into grade 11, it's smooth, yeah. it's seamless, because Paddock and White have the system. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely on the same page, and like Mario said, we're, we're, not a, we're not just a football team there, we're definitely a program. And um, yeah, and it's, it's even the little things that, that they do. It's, uh, I've never seen a high school coach change practice every single day. Right. Whitey writes up a new script for practice every single day. So for him to take that time out of his day to really think about our layout and, and, w and what's gonna really improve our, our playing, um, it's just crazy because because you know what he really takes it serious and and his modeling as a coach it, uh, transitions to us and and we see that and and that's why we try to be so perfect for him because he he's modeling for us and he, he's our mentor and and that's what he's showing and that's what we're trying to do how many schools have you talked to Xavier in terms of recruiting and you know when do you plan on making your decision um I've been talking to mostly four mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be making my decision probably to the end of this week or next week. Right. Yeah. And that just must be the moment you've been waiting for, right? You, you went back for the grade 13 year to win the Asa title. You got it. And now you're committing. What does it mean to you to play at the next level and represent Jacob Hessler? Because that's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, if you asked me three years ago if I wanted to play OUA football, I would have told you not a chance. Right. Um, but yeah, seeing the opportunity that I've been given, it's it's phenomenal. And you know, I can only thank my parents and my brother and my family and mm -hmm. especially God, right, um, to be given this opportunity. And yeah, it's it's wonderful to see that I, I'm valued at the next level, and I'm nothing but excited to see what, what what's in store for me. And you're gonna, you're gonna have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah you're, I you're, so. you're, you're you're gonna have fun, Mario. I don't know. Let's take a trip down memory lane. Why not? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Best. We'll get to Laurier football in a minute. Best memories from Jacob Hessler football. Best memories from Jacob football. Who are uh, the Who are the teammates that just you remember that stand out? I was like my best friends still to this day, like Jackson White, yeah. uh, Jared Pixma. Who else? There's a bunch of guys that don't, not, still don't even play, but like Riley Smith. Uh, Adam DeRoshi, there's a couple guys yeah. from grade nine. Uh, like just like I remember yeah. their faces, but I don't remember their names. Yeah, we yeah. got Borkoff, yeah. Elias. Yeah, yeah. Sean Borkoff. A handful of guys like Sarmazian, right? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and they're all quality people, and I think yeah. that's the thing about Jacob Hesper, too, is that they're yeah. turning out not only good football players, but they're turning out quality people. I want to talk up a bit about Brad Button. He got injured in week two this season. Uh, unfortunate injury at Blueville. He was in this studio a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you guys know that. Um, what a great kid, and what a what a motivational young man he is to have the mental wherewithal that he has to overcome that injury. And he said right at that microphone that you're sitting at, Mario. He said, "My goal is to play Wixa football this September." Yeah. Speak speak to Brad Button. What an um, amazing character guy. You know what? That that day really sucked for all of us. Especially, I, I think for me it was really hard because I never I was actually hurt that week, and I never got um, a chance to play, and I didn't even suit up. So to so to not be able to be on the field with your brother, and especially one who falls down, yeah. and and to to get such a grueling injury, is is really heartbreaking, and and it kind of changed the the this, the shape of the season and the culture for the season. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't only just, you know, our goal, but it was really because we had a brother that, that was down and, you know, we, we expected for us to go to OFSA and, and we, we still held that expectation even though he fell down. And for him to just be so mentally stable now and for him to be so motivated and driven and not really see it as such a huge obstacle, but for him to see it as an opportunity in the sense that he can come back greater and stronger and better. So yeah, you know, kudos to him. And As a young man too, and that's yeah. what I think is the most incredible thing to me, that he's a teenager mm -hmm. and went through obviously an ordeal and a terrible situation. And I, I, I said this on the air that night and I'll say it again, I give that kid full marks. For more highlights, visit our website, 519sportsonline.ca. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.